the while feuding with Jeff Jarrett for most of the month, also feuded with Dusty Rhodes for most of the month. Just a light bit of feuding on the side. So yeah, he has the usual issues with Dusty. It's the usual tradition respect stuff. Nothing too groundbreaking. The big thing is Vader shows up to be Dusty's pal. Yeah, I really wish I cared about it. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not Vader, Vader. It's not the Vader you remember. He is considerably larger, considerably less mobile. But though he occasionally does just do cool suplexes on Nazis. So, you know, that rules. Alleged. <laughs> no, the suplex happened. I think you didn't we do that like exact joke on the watch along. Don't worry about it. We did. It, it's right. only the the number of people who are listening to the ten dollar material are smaller than the number of people who listen to the podcast, so we can repeat it's material for them. And there's only like five people who will be like, "Oh, hey, wait a minute." <laughs> we did not have to call out our distinct lack of originality. Yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just edit this out. Don't worry about it. So yeah, uh, the daddy issue thing does prop up where, where when they're face to face at one stage, Vince Russo is like, your issue with me is because of Dustin Rhodes and nobody cared about Dustin when he was like the lone star Dustin Rhodes when he was just the young up and comer who was just regular old Dusty's son. And they only cared about him when I made him gold dust and you resent that. And I'm like, actually, you know what? That's a pretty good like premise for an angle. Yeah, but also like, I don't know. I think people cared about, you know, WCW tag champion. <laughs> Dustin Rhodes teaming with Ricky Steamboat. Yeah, you go back and watch those matches. Those matches rule. <laughs> yeah, I, I think people cared. People were into Dustin Rhodes. And again, he is one of the better forced on people second generation sons. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously, number two to Shane McMahon, but mm. everyone else. Dustin never jumped off cages. He's no Braun Breaker, but... <laughs> we do not respect that name on this podcast. He's no Tony D'Angelo. I wonder, is Braun Breaker the son of fake <laughs> Scott Steiner? Oh, your dude that you <laughs> drafted. Yeah, Del Rios. I don't think he is. I wonder, is he part of the family? We should we should examine the Scott Steiner lore and to discover whether or not Del Rios fits in in the Braun Breaker <laughs> chronology. <laughs> you should have had um, Del Rios dress up as Braun Breaker. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they bring him back. They should bring back Del Rios. If he's around. <laughs> What's Del Rios up to, do you think? Yeah, what's he doing? He's out working. Because it's always fun to, when we're like watching pay-per-views, I'll have the cage match open usually, and there's like just randos. So it's like, oh, they're still wrestling, and they're like local wrestling company. It's like, good for them. We checked out David Young, and it was like 2019 was his last match. He's still chipping away. Fair play. Waiting to get that call for that one last run, the Diamonds and the Rough reunion we're all waiting for. Ooh, I know I am. So the, yeah, the big thing that leads to a feud between Dusty and Vader and the Harris Bros, which leads to a very cool match, even if it's not a very good match. Which match is that? Vader and Dusty against the Harris Bros, Liam. Oh, yeah, I would definitely describe it as cool. It is. It's Vader and Dusty teaming together. I, I didn't care. I didn't care about any of this. My only prevailing thought about this entire thing was when I was watching um, Dusty cut his promos and I was like... Yeah, this guy's cool as hell. And then you don't care when he teams with the other cool guy to wrestle the Nazis, allegedly? Nah, <laughs> not really. Even though, like, the crowd are super into it and it's super hot. And, like, the match isn't great, but it's carried by the fact that the crowd are like, hell yeah, it's Vader and Dusty. I mean, it's alright. <laughs> I was just more... The whole time I was just watching it and I was just going... You remember when he cut that promo about, um, tradition and um, being in the, the hotel room and the NWA title was, uh was peeking out the bag, and that's when he was like, that's when I knew wrestling was real, like, that moment. Mm -hmm. I was, I really, like, I kind of went on, like, some innermost journey about that promo while watching this match, and I was like, man, Dusty is just the coolest. He's, like, just a real wrestling desperado, you know? Just this bad motherfucker traveling around the country, winning titles, wrestling in, like, sold-out fucking arenas, going to dive bars up. This is what wrestling is. I just got, had this whole, like, flush of thought process, and I was like, damn, I should watch some Dusty Rhodes. Why, well, I, I only know Dusty as an old man. <laughs> uh, it's actually funny, I was gonna say, in comparison to Kurt Hennig, who did pass away this month, one of the shows opened with the 10-bell salute for Kurt Hennig, but in comparison to his TNA work, which is entirely uninspired and not remotely a reflection of him as a performer at his peak, it's funny that you do watch Dusty here and, like, he's not nearly the performer he was at his peak, but he's still the promo he was at his peak. And that still gets yeah. you, gets you, gets you in the heart, gets you in the emotions, gets you thinking about just how good this man is at professional wrestling. 
Yeah, it, it like really it it did hit me every time Dusty spoke this month. I was just like, yeah, this guy, this guy represents that like that era of that era and that um that type of wrestler that you don't see very often anymore. Mm. He's the ultimate defender of tradition for you. Yeah, they I picked like the it. right guy. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> after freaking Bill Barons and Bob Armstrong, like seven and- tries we got the. Ricky Steamboat, and we have another one on these shows with J.J. Dillon, so... Yeah, but I also like J.J. Dillon, so... And Larry Z. Larry Z is good, too, to be fair. Mm. Larry Z is, like, in perfect AEW form right here. It is, like, it's quite nice that there are people finally on these shows that can cut promos. Like, Russo's a good promo for as much as the content of his promos can be terrible. You know, Dusty's a great promo, Larry Zabisco's a great promo... Raven can be a good promo. <laughs> Raven can have some days, but also is a good promo for the most part. Mm, so there are people finally who can talk, and, and even when you, they're like, like the Mike and A sit downs are very good. We'll get to the, the, the some of the more notable ones this month <laughs> in a minute, but like the, the, those are all very good. They're enti- entirely different kinds of promos in very different settings, but they all work for what they're trying to achieve as well. So there's there's good promos, I think, up and down all these shows. And considering you know. 60% of these shows are fucking talking. It's nice to have some people that can talk. Yeah. Instead of people cutting very bad promos and AJ sniffing goalie locks. Although, I I am still, like, an unabashed fan of AJ cutting promos at this point. Even though Larry is literally cutting his promos for him. Just a weirdo dork loser. It's great. 